Welcome to Beyond the Horizon podcast, a show all about the Horizon ecosystem and the exciting world of blockchain and Web3. Join us as we explore the latest happenings in this rapidly evolving space and discover new horizons together. Now let's go Beyond the Horizon. Hey everyone, welcome back to Beyond the Horizon. Today we're welcoming back Temujin, VP of Marketing over at OneChain. Today he's going to be discussing their deployment of the OneChain bridge to Eon, as well as maybe some updates. However, uh, for those who have missed or may have missed the previous interview we did with Temujin, we'd love for you to go ahead and reintroduce yourself or introduce yourself to the Verizon community. Sure, thanks very much. It's a pleasure to be back. Um, as you said, my name is Tamajin. Your pronunciation was excellent. And I am VP of marketing at Wenchain. And I have been in blockchain and Web3 for quite a while now. Um, it originally started back in 2012, 2013 when I was a student. Um, just kind of stumbled upon Bitcoin and had it immediately change my life and the way I looked at things. But I've been in blockchain professionally full time since 2017 during that ICO boot. Um, so I've been at it a little, a little, a little while, I'd say, uh, but I'm still having a lot of fun and I'm still very optimistic about the future. Yeah, that's impressive considering how many bear market cycles you've been through, to be fair. <laughs> yes, I'm a, I'm a little dead inside, Erica. Aren't we all? <laughs> Amazing. Well, let's hop into the Q&A. Uh, so as some of you may know, OneChain has been deployed to Eon for at least, I believe, a month or two now. Um, since the initial deployment, uh, have there been any changes or updates that you guys have made to the paths or or to OneChain itself? Sure. Well, let me start with OneChain itself. So there's been definitely a few changes on that front. We're always integrating new chains, as you know. And so I think it's probably been two or three new chains uh, since last time. Um, we've been both putting a lot of our focus and energy on building out the Cardano community, uh, but obviously we're here not to speak about Cardano, but to speak about Beyond. So uh, on that front, when we originally launched on Beyond a couple of months ago, um, we launched with just a handful of assets. So we have deployed a few digital assets and chains um, you know, since that time. Probably the biggest ones are we've connected Eon directly to Ethereum, um, which now brings the number of chains that are directly connected to Ethereum up to five. So you have Eon connected to Wenchain Layer 1, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Litecoin, and XRP Ledger, as well as a suite of assets, you know, the, the big blue chips that you would expect to see, BTC, uh, USDT, USDC, XRP, as well as uh, a few smaller tokens as well. Amazing. Love hearing that. Um, and we have been just really enjoying our partnership so far. You guys have been amazing to work with, and I know that the community has enjoyed uh, testing out these new functionalities and paths for them to take in order to go to and from Eon, uh, which of course is now officially launched as of today. Uh, at the time of this recording, by the time this is out, you will be like, that's old news, Erica. Um, but uh, maybe you guys could perhaps go into some of the differentiators of OneChain versus other bridges. Sure. Well, I think first off and perhaps... You know, some people who listen to a lot of my interviews will be bored by this, but, uh, you know, OneChain is a little different from other bridging projects in a couple of ways. One, uh, we're extremely R&D focused. So that was kind of our origins, um, taking a really kind of academic approach to developing the field of interoperability, even beyond the OneChain project itself. So that's kind of really always been in service of our mission, try to connect all these different blockchains together and ultimately have, you know, all these blockchains kind of operate as one meta network totally seamlessly interoperable. That's kind of the vision. Obviously, the industry is not there yet, but this is something that we're working towards and it's something that is getting you know, closer and closer all the time. Um, secondly, some of you might not know this, but Wedgin is one of the first, if not the first, blockchain interoperability projects. So that means we have really an unmatched track record. We've been officially around since 2017, the roots a little bit back before that. And you know, we launched our first mainnet bridge in 2018. So we've had mainnet bridges, you know, for over five years now, obviously the number of chains and routes have expanded, but in all that time, you know, we've not suffered any hacks or any type of security incident. So we really have this kind of really proven system, this proven product that has yet to kind of be exploited. So this is also something, you know, that you know, hopefully other bridges will kind of reach the same milestone in time. We're not hoping for anyone to suffer incidents because it's only the users who pay the cost, but you know, this is something that sets one chain apart today. 
Amazing. Glad to hear that. Um, honestly, it's been really impressive seeing you guys' track record. I know that uh, at least for the last couple of years, bridges have historically been suffering different attacks um, and, and your track record is impeccable and highly impressive. So we're really glad to be uh, working with you guys to bridge between Eon and different ecosystems. Uh, we look forward to hopefully maintaining that perfect track record on Eon. <laughs> yeah. I, I share the sentiment. <laughs> awesome. Um, so it sounds like you guys have made a lot of changes recently. What does the roadmap kind of look like for the next quarter or two for one chain? Sure. So um, one thing that we kind of specialize in is bridging to non-EBM chains. And so, you know, it's not only EVM to EVM when you come with one chain. So definitely, definitely you'll see a few additional chains added to our infrastructure. Right now we connect just about 30 networks, again, both EVM and non-EVM. So, you know, by the end of the, uh, by the end of the year, you should see at least two to four more chains reach mainnet by then. Um, the next one is going to be base. Um, so just today, well, today, as of this recording, again, kind of like you, people are probably going to be like, "Can this is old news by now, but. Basically, Circle just launched uh, CCTP for um, the, their kind of in-house cross-chain solution on base today. So OneChain, once again, is the lowest partner for that. So we have, you know, these type of things going on as well. And then in terms of our kind of tech stack, something that's a little bit different. Over the past couple of months, we've been joining a few hackathons, you know, around the world, really stress testing our upcoming general message passing platform. So, you know, right now the Wedgeon bridges deal primarily in fungible and non-fungible tokens, but this new solution, you know, does still benefit from the same proven security that our, you know, all our solutions have, um, but will be a little more flex flexible to developers who want to create something a little more intricate than just a token bridge. That is really exciting. I look forward to seeing the results of that. Um... I can't believe you guys are able to deploy to, especially non-EVM chains so quickly. That is incredible. Hopefully, maybe we'll see a, an Eon base bridge sooner or later. Uh, but looking forward to seeing ways that we can further expand our partnership. Uh, but it sounds like you guys have a pretty exciting roadmap. Yeah. And you know, maybe I'll just leave a, a final message to your viewers of the EO community. You, know, you kind of said tongue in cheek, maybe we'll see uh, Eon base bridge in the future. But you know, once Eon is connected to our infrastructure, which it already is, it becomes, you know, orders of magnitude simpler to connect it to all those other networks. So I mentioned right now Eon's connected directly to five, but this was just basically based on, you know, requests and and demand. Um, if any of these users have a specific chain in mind that they want to see Eon connected to or a specific asset that they want to see bridge into Eon. It really is as simple as, you know, reaching out to to myself or, um, you know, our admins on Telegram or just kind of get in touch with the team. And, you know, we're more than happy to kind of make these assets and chains directly available uh, to Eon and the Eon community you know, per request. Incredible. Um, so I know you mentioned reaching out via Telegram or directly to you. So what we'll do after this video, we'll make sure that everybody has links to these things so that they can reach out to you guys. You never know when we might need that bridge to to base or to another protocol. Who knows? But um, I want to make sure that our community is able to reach out to you guys and say, hey, we, we want this mm -hmm. uh, because you guys are just so amazing and easy to work with. So I'm going to funnel as many people to you guys as I can possibly can. You're going to offload that work to the community, Erica. <laughs> Correct. Yes. We're trying to decentralize the B workload here. <laughs> I, like, I like that parade. Thank you. <laughs> That's my, my former marketing background for you. <laughs> Amazing. So uh, you did kind of just share something really cool with the Eon, Eon and Horizon community. Um, but that was going to be my last question. However, uh, out of curiosity, why did you choose to build on Eon? Sure. You know, I think I maybe hinted at it at the start of uh, our recording today. Um, you know, OneChain, I think it's no surprise to people who know us. We really, truly believe that blockchain interoperability is inevitable, uh, even inescapable if there's going to ever be mainstream blockchain adoption. So, um, you know, we have to be honest with ourselves today. The experience with blockchain, you know, it's not, it's not that great. Um, blockchains are pretty difficult to use. 
um, and, you know, kind of behind the scenes kind of discover that basically every system that's involved in this process becomes a critical system, you know, things can break and do break all the time. And so we need a few things, you know, we need things like standards, we need clarity and regulations, we need better scalability. And, you know, that's really kind of the goal is simple. Uh, this is kind of why we bridge to Eon. Um, because the goal is to connect everyone. You know, we want to play our part just in our little corner of the blockchain industry in terms of pushing adoption um, to enable, basically, like I said, all these different chains to function as kind of one meta network so that we can really have something that the world can use. And, um, you know, so specifically to to the kind of Horizon community, A, the Horizon team is great to work with, very easy to work with. The tech stack is good. You always want to connect good tech and it's got a passionate community. So I hope to hear a lot of these requests coming in, flowing in, so that we can connect Horizon to as many chains as possible. Amazing. Yeah, I hope that they'll start going to you guys directly. Uh, so far, they've been coming to me directly. And I'm like, yeah, let me, let me get that for you. Don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, I, I do hope that our communities start to co-mingle and really start seeing how amazing OneChain is and, and really digging into what you guys are building. Great. Sounds perfect. And I'd hope to see that as well. Thanks for having me on here. Yes. Thank you so much, Temujin. I hope you have a great day and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for joining us on Beyond the Horizon. Stay tuned for more exciting episodes as we continue to discover the limitless potential of the Horizon ecosystem. If you liked this episode, make sure to subscribe and leave a thumbs up. Thank you and we'll see you again next time.